This is our tower of action figures in the middle here. All of the vintage action figures are here, guarded by 575 stormtroopers. These are the boys in the band, the cantina musicians, the Biff musicians. That is the original door to the Moss Eisley Cantina. The Darth Vader costume here is made up of some original pieces that were actually screen used. And the cut piece still has the customer's tag, Bermans and Nathans, Darth Vader. And a Bantha Piñata from a Mexico City Star Wars convention in 2004. I won't let anybody near that with a baseball bat or a lightsaber. I'm in Carbonite and Boba Fett. And this is a one-of-a-kind treasure, the Empire Strikes Bike. We have a Wampa costume. This was made by the ILM model shop and it's a cut off battle droid backpack. Snow from the Wampa cave for the Empire Strikes Back special edition. This was the prototype rifle of Boba Fett. Duro's hands that are still attached. Somehow I ended up with the uh, crotch piece for a bounty hunter, and this is a used C-3PO costume hand. Heavy vinyl, very difficult. It's gotten much stiffer over the years. And a piece of the Millennium Falcon that was built for The Empire Strikes Back. And then Anthony Daniels, who plays C-3PO, walked through the scrap heap and picked up 10 different pieces and gave them names like Reverse Power Flux Coupling Cover and put them in acrylic cases and sold them to ridiculous collectors like me. A toast to the creator, George Lucas. These are my original Star Wars figures that I first bought when they were available in 1978. I opened them all. My Darth Vader has uh, gotten a little white in the face since replaced them all on a mint on the card. Back in the day, they were so desperate to get product out there, they took a $6 million man headset radio and turned it into the Luke Skywalker one. Got some Japanese figures down here. Slight uh, translation error. Stoom Troopa. This C-3PO metal figure fires missiles from its stomach. Now, if you were in Spain, you could get Colgate Dental Cream with an action figure, one of 70 different action figures. Unfortunately for Colgate, this particular one came with Bib Fortuna, the character in Star Wars with the absolutely worst teeth in the entire series. If you were in Italy, you could get an action figure with glue sticks or glue sticks with an action figure, whatever you were looking for. Ewok squeeze toys. Not sure whether these are for kids or dogs, but you'd chew the head off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. has a Darth Vader gargoyle or grotesque on one of its spires. Bootleg figures are big, and the Imperial Gunner is on the card with the most powerful weapon in the galaxy, the Death Star laser cannon. Turns out to be a calculator. Fan-made objects fill Rancho Obi-Wan. This was a gift from someone in Mexico City. They put all of Chewbacca's hair on an action figure. So this is the uh, Louisville Slugger Jedi baseball bat in the San Francisco Giants Wookiee of the Year. Of course you remember Luke Skywalker going to Tashi Station in his R2-D2 van so this was a model kit, and then of course we have a Darth Vader van too. Dolls from Mattel, Barbie dolls that are tricked out as Princess Leia, Darth Vader, and R2-D2. And from Robot Chicken, three stop-motion animation figures from all three of the specials. The Emperor, Obi-Wan, and Nerd Boy. A flip phone. 
encased. Many Wookiees died to bring you this cell phone case. The Japanese use a lot of Japanese culture with their Star Wars products, so we have R2 and C-3PO and the cherry blossoms. Darth Vader going fishing in Tokyo. Of course. Where would I be without a Princess Leia and Padme Amidala bowling ball? There were seven different bowling balls, and there was even a bowling league for a year and a half. Now well, here's a wonderful lady shoe and a treacherous lady shoe. Plush, never made into production. Here's Luke inside the Tauntaun. <laughs> Sounds like this bath has a little indigestion. Wait a second, there's my barrel of hazardous waste. It's the Dianoga. Go back to your trash pit. Thank goodness. Anybody want a Star Wars banana? From Japan, here is an R2-D2 Pepsi-Cola dispenser. Unfortunately, right now it has a Coke can from China in it, but, uh, and the infamous Jar Jar Binks Monster Mouth Candy Tongue. Hmm. Star Wars Old El Paso Soft Tortillas. And then people have made figures of me and sent them to me over the years. Perhaps the strangest being Steve is Yoda. Big ears but I am fully posable, so I guess that means something. Cream of Jawa soup, Dubak cigarettes, R2-D2 Rubik's Cube, all fan-made, nobody's soup. R2-D4. And then we have artist-made limited edition action figures. One of my favorite series is the Severed Limb series. Darth Vader's hand and the Wampa arm. Ann Newman and I love BB-8. And this is maybe a quarter of the objects that have been made available over the last few years on BB-8. Everything from BB-8 oranges and grapes to a little teapot. Now over here on the other side of the room is one of our favorite attractions. And this is the kid's bedroom from say 1984. Or the luckiest Star Wars loving kid in the world. And look who the neighbor is. Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru's homestead right out the window. And we've got some really unusual Lego pieces. And here we have the world's only purple and gold Lego Millennium Falcon with none other than Lando Calrissian tripped out in his purple hat, umbrella, and a paint roller. This was actually done by an intern at Lego in Billund. This is from a friend of mine named Chuck Bowman. And it's the only one of its kind. It's the Bella Labantha rocker. He originally made the Tilly the Tauntaun rocker and has made a number of those for kids. And I complained that it was a little too small for me and that I really wanted one. Here we have R2 Mr. T2, who was on the Conan O'Brien show when George Lucas was a guest back in the 90s. And they wanted something that they could make George laugh about. These three are giant Lego statues, lightsaber replicas, some of them signed, Mark Hamill, Christopher Lee, James Earl Jones. This is a chainsaw and chisel C-3PO from Canada. This is the treasure room. And in here is a bronze sculpture of Darth Vader by Lawrence Noble again original pieces of the Death Star surface. Over here we have a cutaway Millennium Falcon. Figures sold separately, of course, batteries not included. 
and amazing model kits. Large ATST or chicken walker from Matthew O'Connor. If you've always wanted to have an Ewok costume, this is original Ewok fur or acrylic material. In here are perhaps the most famous of the action figures that were never made. And this is the rocket firing Boba Fett, both versions, the unpainted version with the so-called L slot and the painted version with the so-called J slot, which was meant as a kind of locking mechanism. As far as we know, there are maybe 15 to 20, there are a lot of bootlegs out there, of the unpainted version and maybe half of that number of the painted version. And then um, a Finnish sculptor made uh, the uh, Luke, Han, and Leia My Little Pony versions. Our Day of the Dead shrine in honor of Obi-Wan, of course. So welcome to the Hall of the Tanti Four. Uh-oh. So we're just about to execute the Wookiee, and he says, you can't kill me today, it's life day. Life day? I don't even know what that is, do you? Please tell me you executed him anyway. Oh yeah, we killed him. That's no, sure. no. I mean, Whoop. he was just... Whoops. You. Yeah? You, in Rebel Starship Corridor 1138. What are you doing there? Well, I'm just showing folks... see some identification. You don't need to see my identification. We don't need to see their identification. What about the guests? Oh, these aren't the guests you're looking for. These aren't the guests we're looking for. We can continue on our tour. We can let them through now. Thanks, bud. Expansion. Here we have the uh, cantina chessboard. Notice the wallpaper. Dead bad guys. Or here we have a Don Post C3PO, an R2D2. We've got a bunch of uh, helmets here. So the helmets on the back were all. Uh, done by artists and then sold at auction at a Star Wars celebration for Make-A-Wish. And then these are mostly custom-made helmets on loan from a friend of ours. As well as skateboards decks that were uh, sold for the Empire Skates Pack. Our uh, water and cupcake table, one of the world's largest uh, bobbleheads, a land speeder built on a red wagon, and a Jawa sand crawler also built on a red wagon. Let's see if we can't figure out what this is. Common carbonite. R2D2 mailbox. This is Darth Malgus with a contribution from Sideshow Collectibles. Here we have uh, Yoshi Toku, the oldest doll company in Japan, made this um, one quarter scale samurai suit and a headpiece and neck piece for a stormtrooper, and then finally a full figural Darth Vader figure. And this is the world's largest Star Wars painting, the 20th Century Space Opera by Robert Xavier Burton, a San Francisco artist. But it's a brilliantly painted piece. It took him 18 months and 2,000 hours of work. And this giant Darth Vader head was from the Toys R Us mega store in Midtown Manhattan. This is an Ewok mask. I was actually in the Ewok costume for Star Wars Celebration, the opening ceremony. Here we have uh, masks from the Vader Project. Probably the only piece of Star Wars scrimshaw that you'll ever see. This was, I commissioned this, and it's a, an 11,000 year old Mastodon bone. 
and it was done by a gentleman named Noel Green. This is called retirement. We have the emperor feeding the clone chickens and Darth Rooster watching on the fence. Black velvet art from Tijuana. This is a costume that was worn by Kathy Lee Gifford. And Kathy Lee is still in here. She's promised to say hello to us today. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Steve. And now we go to one more room, the fun room. Follow me. So welcome to the Rancho Obi-Wan Arcade, where we have most of the machines that have been made for Star Wars. Don't mind me. 